Hi, Laurel Hill Lions, uh, grade one, two, and multi age and welcome to week 10 in general music. So our music of the month is Haydn's Surprise Symphony. Why is it called the Surprise Symphony? There's a surprise in it. So when you think you hear the surprise, I want you to make a surprise motion. You could jump out of your chair, you go, oh, do a surprise face. That's what we did this week when we were online together in our Google Meet. So here we go. Here's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of the second movement of the Surprise Symphony. And um, here we go. Show me with your body uh, the surprise. It's in the beginning. Did you hear those loud surprises that Haydn put in his surprise symphony? So in the video you just watched, the man uh, at the front of the orchestra is called the conductor. Obviously, the orchestra people playing the violin are called the performers, and it also showed the audience. Okay? So we figured out why it's called the surprise symphony, because Mr. Haydn put a big surprise in there. Uh, thank you to uh, friends who came today, who came this week, excuse me, to uh, General Music. And um, it is, uh, if you're watching this on a Thursday or a Friday, I apologize. Mrs. Dalton canceled our live lesson, so we are asynchronous for the day. So thank you for coming here to the website and watching the lesson. All right, let's keep going. We're in the unit that is who is a composer. So by the end of November, you should be able to explain who's the composer and who's the audience. You're also going to move and sing, play simple rhythms, sing and move to action songs. Those are our jobs of this month in November. So not pictured in the video was the composer of the Surprise Symphony, and his name is Franz Joseph Haydn. Say it after me. I say it, you say it. Franz Joseph Haydn. If you get real famous in music, they put the year that you were born, 1732 to 18, and the year that you died under your name, 1809. And he is so famous that if you say the name Haydn, we think you're talking about this Haydn. He is a composer. He is not a president. Do not say president. He is a composer. Who is a composer? A composer creates music. They often write it down to share with others. And many composers are also skilled performers. Wynton Marsalis plays the trumpet super phenomenally well, but also writes music for others to play. Caroline Shaw is a talented singer, vocalist, and writes other music for other singers to sing. Okay, so we've got lots of composers. Point to the picture of Haydn, because Haydn is a composer. Who is the audience? What is the audience? An audience is a group of people who gather to listen to a performance. So in an orchestra concert or a band concert or a chorus concert, a lot of what they expect you to be <clears throat> is a respectful audience. So if we say, boys and girls, if we say, okay, you need to be a respectful audience. This is what we mean. You need to be quiet when the performer is performing. You should have your eyes on the performer watching what they're doing. 
should be looking around or all over the place. And at the end of the performance, you can clap at the end of the performance, okay? It's different from like a basketball game or a baseball game where you're expected to cheer the whole time, right? You get to cheer on the players. But at a concert, in a concert setting, especially if it's something like an orchestra or a band concert, that's what they expect from you. They expect a respectful audience. So that's what that means. Okay, now here's a quick little video that explains more about the surprise. If you missed the surprise the first time, here's your chance to get um, the surprise the second time. So here we go. You won't understand everything he's saying, but you will notice the big surprise cartoon. And what I want you to do is listen for the words Haydn and what he wanted for his audience, maybe why he wanted to surprise his audience. One of the things we easily forget about Haydn is that when he was writing his symphonies, a new work was big business. There was money to be made. And when Haydn came to London in the 1790s, he found himself pretty much in a ratings war, a bit like The Voice versus Britain's Got Talent or X Factor. It was all about getting people in and making sure that the experience was something that people would talk about and remember. Now, it just so happened that when Haydn was in London in the 1790s, so was one of his brilliant pupils, Pleyel. And he knew that Pleyel was putting on a serious show and was major competition, so Haydn needed a hit. He needed something that people would talk about and be thrilled by. And so what he did was literally thump the timpani, wake them up, stir up the audience, and make a huge amount of excitement that people would love, they would roar and cheer about it. And actually, one of the amazing things that we also forget about Haydn is that he really was up for audience engagement. He wanted people to cheer and to whoop and to cry out when things happened. None of this stony silence, listening to a piece from beginning to end, neatly waiting uh, for the last chord. No, he wanted his audience right in there with him, in the action, responding to it and engaged. And this is what this piece is all about. <laughs> Now it's the second movement, the Andante, that we're listening to now, which gives this symphony its name and its celebrity status. As you can hear, it starts so simply. Just the common notes in each scale, just dancing up and down on the strings. It's so naive, it's so innocent, it's like a children's nursery rhyme. And then suddenly, out of the blue, everyone comes in together and shocks the audience. They talked about women fainting. It was such a surprise to have this sudden accent from the orchestra, the Palkenschlag. But it's actually what follows in this piece, quite apart from this joke, this audience gag. It's what follows which is really amazing. This simple start leads to the whole drama of storm of a minor key and virtuosic writing all kinds of interplay between ideas and remodeling of the tune. He turns it upside down, he does all kinds of crazy things. Um, he keeps the audience on their toes with that simple tune that seemed to be quite content where it was. And that is the introduction to Haydn. That's the story of Haydn, the king of symphonies, a man, the consummate master of how to present an idea and how to make it pull you from your seat into the orchestra and into his world. He was a genius and a smash hit. Did you hear the surprise? I hope you heard it that time. Okay, this week, more about rhythm with our new game, Johnny Grimm. I love this little tune. It's been in my head for a couple weeks. The one that goes, I know a scarecrow and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. If you've never heard it, you can go back to week nine and listen to it again. But we're going to use it today anyway. So let's look a little bit at the apple rhythm. Rhythm is the long and short sounds in music. So if you see in these boxes with the heart, the boxes are the beat. 
Okay. And how many claps do you see in this first box? Two, right? So every, you're going to clap two times in that beat. Two day. Mr. Delgadio uses the nickname two day. And how many claps do you see in the second beat? One. So you're going to clap one time that beat and you're going to say do. Mr. Delgadio uses the nickname do. He uses do day, do, do, do. So if we were to clap all four beats, it would sound like this. Please echo me. Do day, do, do, do. Ready, go. Now let's take those nicknames out and think them and just clap them. So just just think the words do day and do inside your head so it doesn't, doesn't come out your mouth. It'll sound like this. Echo me. Ready, go. Okay, so now musicians don't really like to draw out too many pictures. It wouldn't work if we, we need short symbols. So these are our symbols. So if there's two sounds in one beat, a lot of times it's these two eighth notes right here. So if you see that symbol, it's do day or two sounds in a beat. If you see this symbol, it's one sound in the beat. Let's clap the apple rhythm together. One, keep your eyes on the page and follow the symbols. One, two, ready and go. Two, 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 two. All right, let's look at the corn rhythm. Take a look by yourself and see how many claps are in each box. Okay, so let's clap it together. Ready? One, two, ready, clap. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do. Clap it by yourself. Ready, clap. Okay, and here is it with those symbols, the eighth notes and the quarter notes. Let's clap it with our symbols now. Ready, go. All right, it's time to play Johnny Grimm. It's time to play a game. Ah, pick a vegetable this time and see what happens. A scarecrow goes like this. I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Let's see how well you were listening. What's the name of my scarecrow? Johnny Grimm. And how do the crows feel about Johnny Grimm? They're not scared. And what do they take? A peach and a pear. Let's sing it again. And can you copy my hand motions? Here we go. I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. So let's play a little game that goes with the song. You will need a chair and you will need a rhythm stick or any type of stick. Um, you're going to be standing up so that you can walk around the chair in a bit. Uh, but first, let's learn this little pattern that goes like this. Hand, hand, chair, chair. So two beats on the hand and two taps on the chair. Can we do that? this many times. Here we go. Two, three, four. Let's make one little adjustment. The last time we tap the chair, instead of tapping twice, let's tap only one time. Can we make that little adjustment? Here we go. One, two, Let's do it again, but this time I'm going to sing the beginning of our Scarecrow song. Here we go. I know a Scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Did you see how the word him lines up perfectly with that one tap on the chair? Let's do it again. I know a Scarecrow, 
And his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow. And his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. What did I do in the middle of the song? The take a peach, take a pear part. I walked around the chair. And I had to do it quickly so that I was back for the third part of the song, which is just like the first part of the song. Well, can you see the rhythms to my left and right? These are my fruits and vegetable crop rhythms. Let's check them out one at a time. So up top on this side, the first one is the peach rhythm. Can you be my echo? Do, do, day, do, day, do. Next we have the apple rhythm. Do, day, do, do, do. On the bottom, we have the squash rhythm. Do, do, day, do, do. Over on the other side, we have the corn rhythm. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do. The pear rhythm. Do, 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 day, do, day. And the last one is the onion rhythm. Do, day, do, day, do, do. So, right now, I want you to pick one of these six crops to be yours. Did you pick yours? Okay, once you pick it, you can't change. So, here's how the game works. We're gonna sing the song, we're gonna go around the chair, and then a big crow is gonna stop by and steal one of these crops. Will it be yours? We'll find out. And he's gonna keep coming back and taking more crops until there's only one crop left. And the last group of crop bearers standing are the winners. So here we go from the beginning. I know a scarecrow and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Ah, 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 ah. Uh-oh, that crow stole this crop. Which crop is that? The apples. Sorry, apples. As a way of saying goodbye to the apples, let's play their rhythm two times. Here we go. Continue. Here we go. I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow. And his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Ah, 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 ah. Crows are back, and they just took this crop. Which crop was that? The corn crop. Let's play the corn rhythm two more times. Here we go. I know a scare. And his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow. And his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Well, another crop has been stolen. This crop. Which crop is that? The pears. Sorry, pears. Let's play them two times. I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Another crop is lost. This crop. What was that? That was the peach rhythm. Let's play it two times. Here we go. Do, do, day, do, day, do, do, day, do, day, do. 
I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Ah, 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 ah. Another crop is lost. This time, they took the... The onions. Sorry, onions. Let's play them two times. Here we go. And what was the last crop standing? The mighty squash. Let's play the squash two times. So have fun with that song and with that game. And this song can be sung or played in canon, like this. I know a scarecrow, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. Take a peach, take a pear, Johnny doesn't care. Oh, and his name is Johnny Grimm. Oh, but the crows are not afraid of him. What vegetable did you pick this time? Did you win? Okay, so we're almost done. The, your activity of the week is posted right next to me. Uh, music activity of the week number 10. Move to the rhythm of Haydn's surprise symphony. Find the surprises. What happens when this cartoon on the surprises? And oh my goodness, there are some rhythms right here on this page that you should. we just talked about. That is the symbol that there's two sounds in a beat, right? Those eighth notes. So we would say, do, day, do, day, do, day, do. On this one's the same. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do. If we were to sing it, it's the rhythm of the surprise symphony. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do, do, day, do, day, do, day, do. Okay? So have a great week. I look forward to seeing you at week 11 our last week in November, and I hope everybody stays safe, and I will see you next time, hopefully in music class. Thank you for doing the lesson and the activity.